Hi there, my name is Michael McDonald. I work as an environmental technician in Environment Southland, a local council here in New Zealand. Image velocimetry is a gauging technique that's gaining increased popularity. Following this interest, Mark Randall was brought over from Australia to provide training at a workshop held in New Zealand back in 2019 in Wellington. At this workshop, we went through the history of image velocimetry techniques and methodology. We then set out a site on the Hutt River and collected some video footage to process. We took the learnings from this workshop and applied it to two sites in Southland and then had a further training opportunity in Cairns, Australia, where Professor Fujita was presenting on his new software, which has become HydroStiv. So Southland's located down the bottom of New Zealand. We operate a network of 66 hydrometric stations for flood warning and hydrometric purposes, and we've trolled image velocimetry at a small number of sites. Brightwater Spring was our initial site. We then installed a site on the Makarua River. The site was much closer to the office. And we started using a smartphone, which could be docked into a mount allowing us to run a 3D site with a removable camera. We've recently improved the site, adding a fixed camera, which we're using to contribute data towards a project being run by an organization in New Zealand called NEWA, who are looking at factors that influence alpha. Our first fixed camera site was on the head chart stream. This was a new hydrometric station, which we're looking to develop a flow rating for, so collecting image velocimetry results alongside our conventional gaugings to help achieve this. The most recent site that we've just installed is in the Waikai River. At this site, we don't have access to it during high flow events as the road access is cut off. So we can see image velocimetry being a useful tool in this situation. So this was our initial docking mount. It was a relatively crude system, but it did allow for a smartphone to be reasonably reliably located in position. We did look at other options with the likes of trail cameras or IP cameras, but found that they either needed an object moving past to trigger them or a wireless network to run the site. We improved the docking station with the current version that we use, which is shown on the left here, which is a steel mount where a phone can be reliably located in position. The limitation of the docking stations requires you actually being at present at site to collect the footage, which is not always possible. This led us down the path of wondering if it would be possible to run a smartphone remotely somehow and have a means of controlling it, which is what we've done in the box shown on the right-hand side. So we're using repurposed smartphones to bring the cost to the system down so phones that have damaged screens will no longer hold the charge on the internal battery. We've directly wired the phone into the power supply of this setup and we've removed the internal battery from the smartphone as we found that they weren't able to hold charge over some of the colder winter nights, particularly with batteries that were already previously degraded. We've got a solar panel and a power controller to keep power to the site's batteries and we're running two applications on the smartphone to allow it to work. We've got a gel case that we've glued into the box so the smartphone can be taken out to service it and then it can be re relocated back in the same position. In terms of cost, it's a relatively inexpensive setup. You're looking at around $265 to build a similar system yourself, with the main components of the cost being six volt battery and a memory card. We're not including the cost of the smartphone in this, although it's still relatively inexpensive if you were to buy one new. The first application that we're using that allows the system to work is Automate. So Automate is an Android application that allows you to control actions based on event triggers. We're primarily using text messages to control the device. So we've got a number of flows that we've built. This is one of the simple ones here, which is running in the background on the device. The phone receives a text message, it queries a text message for a list of criteria. In this case, V equals video, so, it's, so it starts recording video. We then sent a message that the video has been captured and the meter is added to the gallery on the device and it loops back to awaiting the text command. We've automated a number of functions, so we can collect media of either fixed length or a customizable length to the external SD card, increasing the storage capability of the device. We can collect video events, so a number of clips over a set time period to capture a flood as it comes through. The footage that is captured can be uploaded to either Google Drive or to an FTP. This is useful with some software with the likes of HydroStiv, which is able to retrieve footage from an FTP and process it with artificial intelligence in near real time. We're also able to download the data at site and store it there, so we're not needing to incur the cost of limiting it over the mobile network. It's possible to check the voltage and the log file of the device remotely. With our real-time series database, we're able to have thresholds on water level, so if the water level exceeds it, it's able to start a video event automatically without us needing to manually send the command to trigger the video to be captured. We're also able to do time lapses of the site as well. In terms of future development, it would be 
interesting to get one of these smartphone sites set up with some of the microcomputers a few other organizations are using where they're running the image blossometry software at site and just delimiting the discharge result even though the phones directly widen the terminals on the back of the device it's still possible to use the usb port for data communication the second application that we're using is wi-fi explorer so Wi-Fi Explorer allows us to have a text message activated download where it generates an automated hotspot at site. And you can use either a laptop or a smartphone to remote in and view, download, or delete the files via a file explorer that's shown here on the right. This is quite useful if you've used either Heights equipment or traffic management to get your site installed in position. Because once it's installed, you shouldn't need to access the camera box again, or you might run the risk of bumping the calibration. It's also possible to run one of these smartphones that's been programmed with the automate workflows without the box. So if you're clicking an opportunistic gauging, install it on a tripod over your site, which is a useful feature. In terms of the challenges, so particularly at a site on the Makarua River, we had issues with bank subsidence. This was mainly an issue when we were using the docking stations as we were using the ground control points to verify that the camera calibration was still valid. However, as the Bank started slumping. This proved a bit of a challenge, and we moved towards using a fixed camera. But the calibration remained constant. Obviously, bank subsidence would have an impact on your cross sectional chain, so it's important to make sure that you have regular surveys at your site and be aware that the bed may change between events as well. Glare and shadow have been an issue, so we've added a sun visor to reduce some of the glare. However, with our site in the Makarua River, it's facing towards the sun, so Midday is quite terrible for collecting video footage. However, early morning works quite well at the site to collect suitable footage to process. We potentially could have played around with filters as well, so putting a follow-up lens over the camera sensor. Texture distribution can also be uneven at some flow ranges, so it's not always suitable to collect footage. We did experiment seeding with grass, so we scattered that upstream. We had a chance to mix and come through, which did improve the texture. However, this would require you being physically present at site to improve the texture. So it's useful being able to send short sections of low quality video back to the office to verify that the camera is operational prior to an event coming through. So this was at our site on the Hedgehog stream. And it was being decommissioned about to be shifted to the Waikaya site. However, over the Christmas period, we had a spider move in that's blocked a large portion of the lens, as well as the vegetation, which has grown up significantly. But it's important having a maintenance schedule to make sure your sites are operational prior to an event coming through. So this is a position that the camera has on the head shape string. We've stabilized the site with wire rope to reduce any effects that wind might have, and we've added a solar panel down the bottom that faces towards the sun. In terms of results, so we've collected a number of image velocity results at the site alongside our conventional gauging. So the black points on this graph here, the results from our ADCP, and the red points are the image velocity results. Comparing the image velocity to the Gauging results, we're looking at differences of around 3%. There is a bit of a strange bend to the rating curve, which we're suspecting might be due to either the channel, which is heavily lined with willow trees, which had greened up with foliage in the period where we started collecting video, or an impact from a similar sized tributary, which enters about 700 meters downstream from our current hydrometric site. So we took the camera system up for a recent gauging regatta that was held in Christchurch earlier this year in New Zealand, and installed it on a section on the gauging stream we set up to do a 2D rectification, so having four ground control points measuring the distance between them, and then put the video through the software River STIB to process the discharge result. We come up with a result that was 3.7% higher than the mean gauge flow from the day. We took an ADCP across the same section and used the extrapolated surface velocity from QREV to relate to the mean velocity to derive a site specific alpha for this site. The future for us, we're looking at running a network of six smartphone sites. Three will be going onto new hydrometric stations. Working on identifying sites where we're able to have drone access and establishing landowner permission. We'd also like to have remote access into the smartphones so that we can upload later versions of the workflow without needing to access the box. I would like to thank the New Zealand Hydrological Society for the support in attending the Ken's workshop. Mark Randall for the knowledge that he's passed on at the various training events. Professor Fujita for the trial of Kustiv as well as Hydrostiv environment self and supporting the work that I've been doing in this area. Thank you.